In this video, we'll talk about the zero vector. The zero vector is a very important object. And even though this is a simple concept to wrap your mind around, it does lead to a few subtleties, so pay attention. Every vector space, including the ones we've been focusing on, has one zero vector, and it is defined by the property that if you add it to any other vector, that vector remains unchanged. So this is a familiar identity and it's very consistent with what we typically mean by the word zero. And even though in different vector spaces, the zero vector is characterized by the same defining property, it looks very different in different spaces. Well, that's just because there is great diversity among vector spaces. So let's go over each one of our examples and talk about what the zero vector looks like. We'll start with geometric vectors, of course. And the zero vector is a vector that starts at the origin and ends at the origin. So it's slightly atypical because we're used to geometric vectors having a direction and a length. And this vector certainly has a length, its length is zero, but it doesn't really have a direction. So it's actually not very easy to draw this vector. So sometimes we'll draw it just like this as a dot, but maybe just to make it look a little bit more like either vectors, we'll give it a little bit of a direction. And of course the direction is completely arbitrary, but just to make it look like an arrow, we might draw something like this, although the direction of this arrow doesn't matter at all. And it's very easy to see, at least by the tip to tail rule, that if you add this vector to any other vector, that vector will remain unchanged. I don't think I need to illustrate this, but it's easy. So let's call this the vector V and let's tack on to the zero vector. Well, that's of course going nowhere. And now we have to connect the tail of the vector V with the tip of the vector that we're adding on to V and it's the same one and it's the same point. So V plus zero equals V. So this truly is the zero vector. And you can't really use the parallelogram rule for adding the zero vector because in the parallelogram rule you have to draw lines parallel to each of the vectors. And this vector doesn't have a direction. So you can draw an arbitrary line and I actually think it'll work, but it's just better to think of the tip to tail rule for adding the zero vector. And in the case of geometric vectors, the zero vector actually has a special notation. So notation for the zero vector is important. And it's actually one of the weaknesses of this object. But for geometric vectors, we have an opportunity to put an arrow above the zero. So this is the symbol that denotes the zero vector. So great. And we're done talking about the zero vector in the space of geometric vectors. Let's now move on to polynomials. And it's pretty simple, although this is where a little bit of confusion starts. So of course, the zero polynomial, maybe I should have used the letter Z, but it's too late for that, is the zero polynomial. So x squared plus the zero polynomial, x squared plus zero, equals x squared. So this object right here fits the bill. And after I go over Rn, I'll come back to this example and say a few more things because there's a little bit of confusion. And that confusion will have to do with the fact that when you're looking at this symbol, you have to be very clear on whether you're looking at zero the vector or the number zero. We'll come back to that. What about in Rn? What vector plays the role of the zero vector in Rn? So if you, need, you must remember the definition of addition and it happens by entry by entry. So of course it is this vector. I'll, this time I'll call it the vector z and I'll give you an example from R3. And of course, it's the vector consisting of the three zeros. If you add this vector to any other vector from R3, let me just label the fact that this is in R3. Okay, uh, that vector will remain unchanged. So here we go, we have three zero vectors in the three different spaces. And of course, they're very different in form. Here it's a directed, uh, not really directed, but an attempt at a directed segment. Here it's a polynomial and here it's a triplet of numbers. So the forms are very different, but the functions is exactly the same. The functions are exactly the same. Adding any one of these vectors to any one of its 
of their colleagues will leave those colleagues unchanged. Now, the subtle point that I already alluded to, when you're looking at a symbol like this, you have to be very clear. I don't want to give too many examples right now, but this will come up again and again throughout the course. When we're looking at this symbol, is it zero the number or the zero polynomial? In this case, it will be easy to tell because there will be an arrow above the zero. And if you write zero without an arrow, but you mean the zero vector, I would consider that actually a small error. This is the symbol for the zero vector because we have this opportunity for an additional flare. But when it comes to polynomials, there isn't another symbol. So there are two things you can do. One, which is what I do, what I would do if this was a book instead of handwritten notes. Uh, you can make it bold. You can use bold font for the zero because all vectors are denoted by a bold font in print. Well, it depends on the author's choice, but that would be my choice. And then this, of course, would have to be bold as well. And then I could actually write that this is the zero vector and make it bold as well. So that's one way of doing it. And of course, I would make all of this vector bold as well. So that's one choice. And the other choice is from context. So you should evaluate the context in the proper linear algebra framework and decide what you're looking at. Because it's a general problem in mathematics and especially the way mathematics is taught. There is too much emphasis on expressions and not enough emphasis on words and what the expressions mean. And sometimes we're mesmerized by expressions, especially after we've taken calculus, because calculus teaches us, teaches us to manipulate expressions. So we give expressions way too much weight and we're sort of uh, encumbered to uh, pay attention to the rules for manipulating expressions. Well, linear algebra breaks you out of that mold and it invites you to really think about what expressions mean. So throughout the course, you will have an opportunity to look at different expressions that have the symbol and it won't be necessarily bold because when one is writing on the board, it just takes too much time to make it bold. So you'll just decide for yourself whether you're looking at the zero vector or the number zero. So I'll give you one example. Suppose somebody writes this identity, x minus one times x plus one minus x squared plus one equals zero. So of course, if you multiply this out, everything will cancel and you'll end up with zero. So if you saw an expression like this in, in an ordinary algebra course, this would very clearly be zero the number. But when you're studying linear algebra, what you have on the left, let's say is a sum, or you can call it a linear combination, is a linear combination of three polynomials. And when you combine polynomials in a, in a linear combination, the result is another polynomial. So this right here, is not zero the number when you're studying linear algebra. This is zero the polynomial. We have a vector on the right hand side. We have a linear combination of vectors on the left hand side. So it is a vector on the right hand side. And that would have been the interpretation if and if I didn't make it bold. What you have on the right hand side, to have a little bit of space, is zero the polynomial. Zero the polynomial is something that has a graph, like any polynomial does. And its graph looks like this. So if you think that I'm uh, talking about something completely obvious, I think at some point we'll come back to this a little bit and you'll see that it's maybe not so obvious. Uh, in the case of Rn, you might have an expression, just something similar. How about 1, 2, 3 minus 1, 2, 3. There are two, let me see if there's enough space. Ah, excuse me, there isn't space. All right, let me move this, this incredibly difficult calculation over here. One, two, three, minus one, two, three. There are two ways to write down the answer to this calculation. You can write down zero, 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 or you can simply write zero, meaning this vector minus this vector equals the zero vector. 
So this is a perfectly good vector identity as long as you remember that this symbol represents this vector. So the interpretation of this symbol very much depends on the context. And once again, this is not very complicated and you'll get used to this rather quickly as we march through linear algebra. So that's it for the zero vector.